In 1960, 20th Century Fox offered Taylor a record-breaking million dollars, more than four times her previous salary, to play the title role in their lavish production of Cleopatra. In some ways, the bloated production was a fiasco, but Taylor's portrayal of the ancient Egyptian queen would help transform modern fashion. Cleopatra's Oscar-winning costumes echoed Elizabeth Taylor's increasingly flamboyant private tastes. But it was Taylor's dramatic makeup that galvanized fashion, becoming the defining look of the 1960s mod era. Not surprisingly, Taylor designed the elaborate makeup herself. At the very beginning of the 60s, the whole trend was the bright lips, the red lips, and not much eye makeup at all. And the eye makeup that she did in Cleopatra really put eye makeup, false eyelashes, and, you know, lots of fabulous shadow on the map. Cleopatra influenced the way that mod girls wanted to look, but I think it's true to say that Elizabeth Taylor influenced the way they wanted to look. I mean, that was the Liz Taylor look. All that I shall ever want to hold or look upon or be or have is here now with you. But the biggest story to come from Cleopatra was Elizabeth Taylor's scandalous romance with and subsequent marriage to co-star Richard Burton, who showered her with some of the world's most expensive jewels. Now at the pinnacle of success, hailed as the world's most beautiful woman and Hollywood's most trend-setting star, Taylor's private life ascended to legendary status. Elizabeth was famous for letting others wear her jewelry, especially the legendary 33-carat Krupp diamond. One evening at dinner, she insisted that Leslie Ann Down try it on. It was a little large on me, and I went to the restroom, and it fell off my finger. <laughs> And I don't think I have to say where it fell off my finger. <laughs> so I fished it out. In 1969, Burton beat out Aristotle Onassis for an astounding 69 carat diamond. Uh, this monster. Double fingerprints on it. The most famous one um, is 69.42 carats. She wore it everywhere, but principally to Princess Grace's 40th birthday in Monaco, where she arrived by boat with machine gun bearers with Uzis that took her in with the Taylor Burton diamond around her neck. It was a sort of delicious throwback to the silver screen years, and it provided a sort of continuum with the great movie divas of, of the 30s. I think it's a very high glamour, highly charged thing that she that she had these incredible jewels and loved to be given them. In 1966, still leading the life of the world's most glamorous star, Elizabeth Taylor created her greatest film sensation by daring to become unglamorous. <laughs> Starring opposite Richard Burton in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, she shocked audiences, deliberately gaining 25 pounds and transforming herself into a frumpy, middle-aged alcoholic. I think she was incredibly brave. And I think that by that time, she had pretty much reached where you could go with beauty in this industry. When her daring gamble was rewarded with a second Oscar, Elizabeth's jewels were more dazzling than the ceremony itself. After Virginia Woolf, Taylor made fewer important films. Her glamorous life as the world's most extravagant movie star itself became her greatest role. But by the late 70s, things had changed. After two tumultuous marriages to Burton, repeated illness, alcoholism, weight problems, and emotional troubles, her days of fashion leadership seemed over, but not for long. When we return, Taylor the Survivor makes one of the most astounding comebacks in fashion history.
By the early 80s, Elizabeth Taylor had lived through the best and worst that stardom has to offer. Four Academy Award nominations, two Oscars, and more fashion milestones than any star of her era. But also the cruel scrutiny of fame amidst the private anguish of illness, obesity, and addiction. Throughout this period, she continued making occasional films and TV appearances, but her insistence on doing everything her way, including fashion, now landed her on many of the industry's worst dressed lists. She rarely listened even to her closest friend's advice. Sometime I had to push her and to say, don't put lots of flowers in your hair, because you don't need it. You don't need flowers, I promise you. And she said to me, no, listen, stop always to try to make, a, to make me a very chic woman. I'm not a chic woman. I like clothes, but you always want to me to be perfect. I like to be uh, different. She would say, I know what I look like, Polly, and I know what looks right on me, and I know you want me to get into that beaded dress, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, this is not a trendy thinking woman. Fashion experts constantly bemoan the fact that today's stars lack individuality, but they have nonetheless lambasted Elizabeth Taylor for hers. Fashion critics are always going to criticize her because she's deliberately been a fashionable over the years. I believe that Elizabeth has her own sense of style, basically. She knows what she likes. She is daring, basically, she wants to please herself. It's not about somebody else. People say she should do this, she should do that. No, she should do what looks great and what she feels good with it. In 1985, a rejuvenated Elizabeth Taylor went against the grain yet again. Discovering that she could put the fame she had earned from a lifetime of stardom to good use, she became the first star in Hollywood to speak out about AIDS. Her legacy of fashion leadership was an important part of her success as an activist. She remains this extraordinarily potent, exciting figure. And one of the tremendous and positive things that's come out of it is that she's decided, she has realized that that is something that can be harnessed to charitable work. And to profitable work as well. In 1987, Taylor launched her first perfume, Elizabeth Taylor's Passion. It was an instant success and was followed by several more romantic fragrances. These have always brought me luck. Including the enormously popular White Diamonds, which joined the elite group of the top five perennial best-selling perfumes. Shooting her 1996 Black Pearls ad campaign, Photographer Herb Ritz placed Taylor in a swimming pool and discovered the same ineffable fashion sense that designer Moss Mabry had noted decades before. She, she and Jose had worked the hair for about four hours and it was like out to here. And I'm going, I gotta be honest, the hair does not work, you gotta get it wet. And she just sunk down, dipped her head back completely, came back up, put her fingers through it and she was ready. And she looked incredible. In the end, Taylor's unerring dramatic sense has gained her more fashion influence than any star of her generation. I just love the irony of the fact that I have been on every worst list <laughs> ever compiled. And she's always done it her way. She just wasn't going to do it anyway, but the way she wanted to do it. She was, and you know, you had to always sort of fall back and say, my God, this is a real star. This is a big star. The essence of that stardom, the boldness, inner beauty, and gift for self-invention that has been her real trademark, shone through when Taylor allowed her Brits to photograph her shortly after she underwent brain surgery. The one I loved the most was a profile of her without the hair, without all the trappings of all that. And she just had this gaze that was just so timeless and strong. She's more than a star. She's more than somebody that she just thinks about clothes or about, she's a real unbelievable human being. She has a kind, loving spirit. 
and that shines through. And that finally is your beauty. At the end of anybody's day, your spirit is your beauty. When you is beautiful on the outside and the inside, that's what does it all. And that's Elizabeth. There's no telling what we'll see next from Elizabeth Taylor, but chances are she'll continue to rock the fashion boat for as long as she lives. Whether it's with a provocative gown, a bold new hairstyle, or a popular new fragrance. And that's as it should be for this, the most beautiful woman of the 20th century and the last of the great movie stars.